So you've designed and built your own hydraulic clutch setup for your car, and the pedal is way too stiff. Likely, you made one or two errors, and that would be relating to pedal ratio and hydraulic ratio. And I'm going to explain both of those to you right now so you can fix that problem. Greetings, fellow DIYer, and welcome to my video. I've been selling hydraulic clutch kits for over 20 years, and I have an assortment of options available for people wanting to put a hydraulic clutch on a T5, TKO, TKX, 3550 for a Ford bell housing application. Wait a minute. This is starting to sound a little bit like an ad. Well, it's not. I am going to advertise a little bit and show you the products they offer, but I'm going to stick that at the end of the video. You came here to learn something, and I'm here to teach you that something. This is my third video in this series, and because of the first two videos, I keep getting the same question over and over and over again from people out there who are watching my videos and designing their own hydraulic clutch kit. And the question that keeps coming up is, you know, what can I do to make my pedal less stiff? The first thing we want to talk about is pedal ratio. And simply what that means is it's the stroke of the master cylinder in relation to the stroke of the pedal. Now, I just heard myself say that, and that seems a little bit confusing. Let's unpack this a little bit. Let's say that for your application, your master cylinder needs to move one inch. Now, let's say that you attach that master cylinder further down from the pivot point on the pedal. And the result is that one inch of pedal stroke equals one inch of master cylinder stroke. That means you have a pedal ratio of one to one. And that is going to result in a pedal that is as stiff as, well, the amount of pressure required to release the clutch, assuming that there's not any hydraulic ratios going on, and we'll circle back to that. So assuming that your one inch of master cylinder travel is getting you one inch of slave cylinder travel, and your clutch takes 100 pounds to actuate, it will take 100 pounds of pressure on the pedal to actuate that clutch. But if you can connect that master cylinder to the pedal closer to the pivot point so that one inch of stroke at the master cylinder is created by five inches of stroke at the pedal, you have now created a pedal ratio of five to one, which in the real world means that if your clutch requires 100 pounds of pressure, you are now able to get it done with 20 pounds of pressure. And that's great. Sadly, we live in the real world and we can't always get the connecting point on the pedal to be that magical, perfect place where the exact full master cylinder stroke equals the exact full pedal stroke. In the case of my Mustang kits, the master cylinder typically bottoms out with the pedal about an inch off the floor. So we are leaving a little bit on the table, so to speak. And that was the result of working with OEM constraints. When I designed that kit, I wanted to mount the master cylinder in the OEM clutch linkage hole in the firewall. And I wanted to connect the master cylinder to the OEM clutch linkage hole in the pedal. And those two things together are what resulted in a pedal that doesn't quite make it to the floor before the master cylinder bottoms out. So if we've not got the optimum pedal ratio, what can we do to soften the clutch? Well, we can change up the hydraulic ratio. If I go back to what I said originally, and we are getting one inch of stroke at the master cylinder, and it is resulting in one inch of stroke at the slave cylinder, 
that means you have two identical bore cylinders. So you've got a master cylinder that may be a seven eighths or a three quarters or a one inch bore. And then you have a slave cylinder that is the exact same bore. It is seven eighths, three quarters or one inch. And those fluid volumes are the same. So when you move the master cylinder one inch, you get one inch of stroke at the slave cylinder. But if you can change it up so that more stroke at the master cylinder equals the correct amount of stroke at the slave cylinder, you have now created another ratio. So the important thing is getting the correct stroke at the slave cylinder. That is a fixed number. Your clutch requires a certain amount of travel to engage and disengage the clutch. In the case of my T5 kits, that's a little less than one inch. There's nothing we can do to change this. Well, that's not completely true. You could redesign your clutch fork and do a bunch of modifications in the bell housing to potentially change the required stroke to actuate the clutch. But that's opening a whole nother can of worms. For simplicity's sake, we're going to say that that number is our starting point. We need for my application and many applications, one inch. If you can get a smaller master cylinder with a bigger stroke and have it have enough fluid volume to actuate the slave cylinder, the difference in the bigger stroke of the master cylinder and the smaller stroke of the slave cylinder is now a hydraulic ratio. So now we need to start looking at the bore and the stroke of the master cylinder. If you can get a smaller bore on the master cylinder, but a larger stroke to equal the fluid volume required for the one inch at the slave, you're reducing pedal effort by reducing the hydraulic ratio. Let's say you found a master cylinder that is 0.7 inches in bore and 1.5 inches in stroke. The smaller bore and the bigger stroke coupled with the 7 eighths slave cylinder will give you one inch of stroke at the slave cylinder. Best part is we have now created a hydraulic ratio of 1.5 to 1. So that means that we are reducing our pedal effort by that factor of 1.5. So if we go back to my original example, you have 100 pounds. The pedal ratio is a ratio of 5 to 1. Now we multiply that by the hydraulic ratio of 1.5 to 1, and we get 7.5 to 1. At 7.5 to 1, that 100 pounds has become roughly 13 and a half pounds. 13 and a half pounds is something you can easily push with your foot. It's not tons of weight and you have a decent clutch pedal. So if you've set up a hydraulic clutch and it's way stiffer than you wanted it to be, make sure that you look at the hydraulic ratio and the pedal ratio. Now let's say you don't want to set up your own stuff. You don't want to find the parts. You don't want to mess with that and you want a ready-made kit. Well, if you're using a Ford bell housing that actuates the clutch from back to front instead of Chevy bell housing or some of the old school Ford bell housings that actuate the clutch from front to back, you're in luck. I offer hydraulic clutch kits for T5s, 3550s, TKOs, and TKXs. And all the math is done for you. All the fabrication is done for you. Everything is set up to maximize the hydraulic ratios and get everything working just perfectly. Now you may have to tweak things a little bit when you put it into your application to get the pedal ratio just right. But those kits are available. I offer them on my website. If you're interested in one of those, make sure you check that out. So what am I offering? Well, I have three kits here that are for a T5 transmission. That's this guy right here. It mounts to the side of the T5 transmission in the tabs that are cast into the case. I have this guy right here, which is for a 94 and up T5 transmission because the clutch fork no longer lines up with the side tabs on said T5. 
I offer this guy right here, which is a broken tab or G-Force type T5 transmission mount. And then I offer this bracket right here, which does triple duty. It's good for the 3550 series of transmissions, the TKO series of transmissions, and the new TKX that Tremec came out with a little over a year ago. As I said, this one mounts to the side tabs on a T5, and all of these are what I call a flush mount. So to mount up any of these brackets, what you end up doing is removing the mounting bolts for the transmission on the clutch fork side, and then you place this up where those mounting bolts go and then use a longer bolt. So basically you're sandwiching the transmission mounting tabs between any of these three and the bell housing. Now, when I first designed these kits, I only offered two slave cylinders. This guy right here, which works in all three of these brackets, and this guy right here. And both of those are a 7 8 inch bore slave cylinder. But what if you're using a master cylinder that is already in your Ford Ranger? Or you're using a master cylinder that's in a Miata or something else? Well, then this may or may not work, and we have to do some math. I know, math for many of you is a four-letter word, but we have to use it to know if your master cylinder has enough fluid volume to actuate either of these slaves. And because people are using their OEM master cylinder, I had to do some homework and find a smaller bore slave cylinder. So this is a three quarter inch bore slave cylinder that replaces this, fits on that bracket. You can see I've added slotted holes to later production T5 brackets just for that purpose because the bolt pattern here is narrower than the bolt pattern here. So now we have both options. We have the three quarter inch and we have the seven eighths. And the same is true of these flush mount. This one is 7 8 and this one is 3 quarter. Now, sadly, this one costs me quite a bit more than this one does. So if a person wants to use this slave cylinder, the price of the kit is going to go up. In the case of these two, it's just a direct swap. This is normally what comes in the kit. They say, hey, I need a 3 quarter inch slave. I swap it out for this. There's no extra charge. The other thing that all my kits come with is... This little guy right here, and this is a spherical bearing push rod. And what's really nice about this is it fits into the clutch fork. Now, as the clutch fork moves, it's moving in an arc, which means this is going to pivot ever so slightly as it's pushing out. And by having this spherical ball, it fits tight inside the pass-through hole on the clutch fork and it just gives you a nice smooth clutch action. And then you can adjust it with this nut and then you tighten the jam nut up onto this nut so that it is locked into place. Now for years I sold them without jam nuts. The pressure from the pressure plate transferred through the clutch fork was enough to keep this from moving. And that's actually how both of my cars are set up, no jam nut. But I had enough customers say to me, hey, you know, I've had a little bit of movement that I just decided to start adding jam nuts. It didn't really cost a whole lot extra, and it's just a little insurance to make sure that everything is locked into place. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.